1933, as though it was when the century before last. <laughs> and look at him. He looks, he looks about four years older than me, doesn't he? Absolutely wonderful. Well, that's the picture oh, of Dorian Gray, I'm afraid. Is it? <laughs> no, you do. You look wonderful. Thank you. They say Michael M. has made a film for us about the house he grew up in. I was born on the 12th of January, 1933, the year Hitler came to power. I was born in Battersea, but brought up here in Isis Street in Wandsworth. The radio was our lives, and I used to sit there listening to Uncle Mac and Wireless in Toy Town and all those programmes. Never dreaming, of course, that one day I would actually be involved in it. Uh, ironically, the wireless gave us our most terrible experience because we all sat on the edges of chairs with our mum and dad and, and heard Mr Chamberlain. It was terrifying because our parents had said it was, wasn't going to happen. And now it was going to happen. And I felt that the Germans would be coming down the street that day. Ah, now this room, the kitchen, this was a very happy room, particularly pre-war, when we were small. My father sat there and he used to rub his chin against our little faces just to feel the rasp of his beard, which was all very nice. And my mother bustling around. And us kids... There was plenty of noise and a lot of laughter. Certainly in those early days, there was a lot of laughter. Being London children, we would have been targets, all right, because the Germans would have headed straight for us. And people from all over Britain were taken to the most unlikely places. When evacuation happened, uh, I was seven years old by that time. Uh, my sister was nine, and Alan, being the baby, was just four years old. And we came from this kitchen to the school and then were marched off to the station having been equipped with our, our gas masks and our little labels. We got on a train and we didn't come home. We woke up later that day in the heart of Somerset and we didn't come home for another four and a half, five years. Coming home after the war, I'm sure for a lot of kids, was a sort of anti-climax. The greatest problem, I suppose, was a change of relationships after the war. And my father, who had been just the, 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 the lovable dad who'd uh, cuddle you and carry you on your shoulders and all that, that was all gone, of course. And he could only respond in a kind of military way and try to order us about and, and, and treat us in a way that was not, we felt, fatherly. The greatest victim, of course, was, was Alan. Having been sent away so young and stayed away for so long and stayed with people of such a different type, to come back into a busy, raucous family life with people he didn't know, who seemed quite rough, I expect. That was a trauma that stayed with him for years and it showed most in his relationship with my father. They had a difficult time together. Ah, yes, now, this room, if I, if I had stood here, all those years ago, I would have been standing on my own head because I slept along this wall in a fairly narrow bed with my brother Alan. And uh, I remember my mother bursting through that door and they were saying, it's half past nine, will you get up? And we got up. At 16, I went off to be an office boy for a publisher. And at 18, national service called, uh, in my case, the army. Um, and then instead of going,